But what I'd like to describe is just quickly share and throw into the pot, as it were, some things I, we have learned just to throw into the mix around each of these three stages of onboarding, questing, and illumination. Um, if they're useful today, great. If they're not, don't use them. But I'll throw them in to see if they help. So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just talking about those. And then I'm going to share five principles that are important to me. And I'm going to bring them to life, not in a business context. So onboarding, where we are now, for us is the most important part of kicking off a creative team. And you can see on the actual diagram, there's a question mark and three carriages. Well, each one of those represents something for us when we are helping unlock the creative power of teams for innovation, transformation, change, whatever level, actually, of any system we work with. First of all, what's the breakthrough question? What's the question that points you beyond what you know? A question that has energy, that you are excited about, that you are curious about, that helps you move beyond your current knowledge base, takes you beyond. Now, in effect, we've created that question for today that's here to unlock the creative power of teams. What can we share with each other, mine from each other, uh, around this topic, this question? So once we've got a focusing question that creates a shared intent to go and do something different, we pay attention to three things. How do you create the container, physical, emotional, energetic container, to give it the best chance of success? At one level, these are practical. Have we paid attention to the space, the quality of the space, the light? Have we prepared people in the right way, or as best as we can? What's the tone and energetic field we want to create to give it the best chance of success? Are we paying attention to some of the health issues so that we have the energy and fuel to make it uh, flow? And we're going to come back to this through the day of what we've all learned and what clues we each have about creating the container. The second carriage is expanding self-awareness. How can we raise the individuals in the groups we're working with, awareness to what they do that will enable them to ride the roller coaster, and what they do that collapses it? And we all are really good at collapsing it. We've all been trained to do it in one way, shape or form. And the third one is building systemic awareness. How are we pay, paying attention to the quality of contact, the space between us, the wider system at play of which we are a part? How can we raise our awareness to that so that that, our, our quality of contact, our relationships, the place in which we find ourselves doesn't collapse the potential and we just collude with it? So the flatlining things that can get in the way of this stage is, of course, the first easy one, staying in what we know. We're very good at staying in what we know, replicating it, uh, defending our beliefs and opinions, batting them back and, forth, back and forth, replaying old thoughts and thinking it's new ways of thinking, as opposed to actually starting to generate new thoughts, have new thoughts, say, say things, do things you've never done before. Another one we see people do at this point, because to actually do the onboarding, you often have to slow down and... Often, organizational culture wants to jump straight into task. So what are we doing then? But actually, we pay attention to slowing down before you speed up. And fighting the urge just to get into activity. Because if you don't pay attention to these, these are just clues. You'll have your own versions of these, I'm sure. But critically, you or we can get in the way of the roller coaster very, very easily. So I say this to raise our collective awareness and actually start to support and challenge each other around how any one of us or collectively we may be flatlining. Questing, when you go below, out of what you know and into the unknown. We've played with four areas, four plays on the word nowhere here. But when you go into the unknown, some of the things that resource us. So first of all, you have to learn how to step into the unknown. How do you move beyond it? What are the tools and techniques to help you find the edge of your knowledge and actually admit this is something we don't know and we now want to move in 
into, we want to be passionately want to move into, there's energy to move into it. Often this moves into complexity, chaos, uncertainty, volatility. So how can you stay present and just tune in to what's happening for you when you're lost in the forest? What are you noticing? What are you seeing? How is your self-awareness helping you be present and listening behind the words, looking at the spaces between? Because when you actually can be still in these moments of chaos, suddenly you'll see and find and follow a new flow you hadn't seen before. And how can you trust that flow and move with it rather than keep self-selecting it? I like this, I don't like this. How to prematurely make meaning of experiences rather than just immerse yourself in the experiences. And often you see things you never knew existed in this phase. And once you can able to let go, to be truly lost in the forest, suddenly you'll find a new way forward and you'll have a deeper way of knowing that this is what's going to make the difference. As opposed to it's a choice point of, I like this or I don't like that. How does it come from a new pattern that moves us forward? So things we do that get into the way. And if I come back to the roller coaster experience, I hate roller coasters. Because I know at this point, when I am going up to the tip and I'm going off, I will be shutting my eyes, holding on for dear life. It's now a white knuckle ride, and I miss the experience. I hold on too tight, and I don't enjoy it. I don't see the view, I don't see anyone. All I'm caring about is when it stops. It's, 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 a, it's a real experience for me, but this is a great experience we see lots of people do. When you go into the unknown and the acceleration of complexity and chaos happens, they often hold on for dear life rather than let go and wander with it. This is also where you come up to the edge of your belief systems and your assumptions, and you have to start to bring them forward and actually expose them and explore them yourself and in groups. And this is a fantastic place where you hide your insecurities and actually find a reason not to do something because it may expose you. Illumination. So how do you move from the unknown to find a new way forward? Well, the two exclamation marks stand for two things for us. We had them in the objectives of the day. How can you actually create something that's other than yourself, that's innovative and new? It may be new to you rather than new to the world, but at this point, new and it's other than you. But in that moment of that creation, you change. You have now seen something, done something you've never done before. You've found a different order, and you cannot go back to what you thought, believed before. You've seen something. You have progressed and stepped forward. Often in this phase, you have to let yourself be saturated. You have to work with tension, timing, actually understand you need to sometimes break down before you break through. How do you start working with pattern as opposed to just fact? And this ultimately leads to a worldview shift. You suddenly see the world differently. Things we are expert at doing that get in the way of this last piece of the puzzle is we often have many mechanisms to collapse the creative tension. We don't think this is getting anywhere, so what's the next task we need to do? We need to come up with an action plan it, or, this isn't working, I'm, you know, there's many reasons why you don't stay with the tension and go deeper. Also at this stage, this is often the time where things that have been withheld now have to come forward to change the rules, change the pattern. This is often where people find themselves saying, I need to say something now. I need to call someone on someone's belief system that's getting in our way. So it's kind of, this is an act of courage, this last phase, often, to call things that are very difficult to do, but speaking the truth will unlock the last phase. 